Everybody, welcome to another episode of the program. So uh, today we're going to talk about how humans interbred with four extinct hom- hominin species now. I mentioned earlier about some of this uh, research. Like I talked about the fl- uh, Homo floresiensis from Flores Island. I talked about the Kalau man from Kalau Cave. I've talked at length about Denny Sylvans and Neanderthals. And I was always uh, mentioning how a lot of the scientists were saying... Oh, it's more than than likely that he, extant Homo sapiens now, uh, modern anatomically modern humans, they have all kinds of genes that haven't been mapped yet, or they don't know where it came from, and had been long speculated that uh, Homo sapiens had not only migrated out of Africa and mingled with Neanderthals and Denisovans, but they probably ne- mingled with at least four other extinct hominin species. And again, this is just scratching the surface of, of the complex uh, genetic past that we have and share with our ancestors. So um, th- this article is really cool because there's this really interesting map. It's a, it's a Pleistocene era map. So it shows the coastlines as they were 120 meters shallower than they are now oh, or about 400 uh, feet uh, more shallow. So um, it reads, uh, anatomically modern Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa around the rest of the world, met and interbred with at least four different hominin species, according to this new research from the University of Adelaide. Uh, Strikingly, of these hominins, only Neanderthals and Denisovans are currently known. The other remain unnamed and have been detected as traces of DNA surviving in different modern populations. Uh, So again, here's a picture of, uh, I think this is Homo floresiensis. Yeah. It's a reconstruction based off of the bones that they found. Um, and the rest, the rest of it is uh, just speculation. Um, the extinct hominin species that lived in Indonesian island of Flores between 24,000 and 18,000 years ago. So this is very, very recent stuff. And this is one of the extinct hominin species that we uh, mixed with. So this co-author of the paper is uh, Dr. Zhao Teixeira which was uh, published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. So this is a very legitimate um, peer-reviewed journal. So one of the first things he says is these archaic groups were widespread and genetically diverse and they survive in each of us. So again, I mentioned uh, before that there are uh, specifically Australasians, Austronesians, or uh, Polynesians, however you want to call it, they have a certain amount of their DNA that is unknown they don't know where it comes from and now it's starting to come out that they come from these eh hominins or extinct hominins so all present day populations now show about two percent neanderthal dna depending on where you look Um, some some races have more than others depending on again the region that they're from and then uh, we mixed with them and then the ancestors of modern humans soon after they left Africa, around 50,000 to 55,000 years ago, uh, they were mingling in the Middle East and some parts of, of um, India as well and Southeast Asia. Um, but as the ancestors of modern humans traveled further east, they met and mixed with at least four other groups of archaic humans. And I think I would expect in the future that more and more of these archaic humans, these extinct humans, might have also um, be revealed that they also uh, mixed with human uh, Homo sapiens as well. Uh, island Southeast Asia was already a crowded place when what we call modern humans first reached the, uh, the region just before, before 50,000 years ago. And of course, Southeast Asia, that part was Sunda and the and New Guinea and modern day Australia is known as Sahul. So those two supercontinents, as you would call, um, were had a bunch of humans, a bunch of archaic humans living there. And as he says, at least three other archaic human groups appear to have occupied the area and the ancestors of modern humans mixed with them before the archaic humans became extinct. So again, um, we had this period of mingling and who knows what brought... Uh, our ancestors, uh, the Homo sapiens, to that area. It could have been, it could have been conquest. It could have been uh, trade or or even religion. It, who knows? Everything's up in the air. 
Um, it could have been some sort of climate regime that was taking over and they had to uh, migrate over or maybe they were driven out of Africa. It's The possibilities, again, are all um, yet to have been firmly established. Uh, in the new research, Dr. Teixeira analyzed genetic, archaeological, and fossil evidence, as well as additional information from reconstructed migration routes and fossil vegetation records. So again, they're just taking what they can find and trying to extract as much information out of there just so we could build this picture of what was going on. And, they, and they've gotten so far now that they know for sure that we, us, the modern humans, part of our ancestors legacy was this mixing event within so southern asia so again between us the, or the, our ancestors and a group of extinct hominins so eh1 and then there's another extinct hominin too which is again in flores um and then it shows uh this interbreeding all they map out all the interbreeding between the Denisovans, Neanderthals, us, and these two extinct hominins here with this uh, map. So let's take a look at this. This is really interesting. So um, this map again. This is paleo vegetation reconstructed at sea level uh, minus 120 meters. So you can see this is Sunda. Let me zoom out a little bit. So what is Cambodia, Vietnam, Thailand? Uh, Indonesia all that was connected and you can see that um, so let me explain the landscape here so so this dark green here is tropical rainforest and you can see it's all along um, the, uh, th this part here this if you look at the horizontal the, the horizontal part it, it's pretty consistent with uh, in terms of climate and then we have a savanna which goes through all the way from Cambodia and near China all the way down to Sahul and near New Guinea and even parts of the, the eastern part of Australia and then we have a desert here wooden shrubland here and then we see how this is the proposed route that the humans took and along the way they were establishing populations and mixing with people so now the interesting part so now that we know the climate regime and and the, the geography a little bit of, of that time period we can see f up here is like india and um if you go further up it, that's off map it, uh you get to the middle east and and, st and uh, asia minor if you keep going all notice the genetics of these people right here is a, pretty much a hundred percent gray which is Anatop which is homo sapiens basically so you can see here all along that these are for the most part anatomically modern humans these two here they have a sliver of purple which is the first extinct hominin that we don't know of and again they're in this place called the andaman islands very interesting stuff they were I this these were islands about fifty thousand years ago too so again these weren't attached to the landmass so it's very interesting that these humans have this type of this purple eh1 G, uh, genetics same thing in jahai and kintak here you can see largely anatomically modern humans with a little bit of eh1 and then you keep they keep going and they and then they they split up one they keep going east into sahul and then and the others go north near Cal what's now the philippines and then kalau cave you can see you get this mix of red which is denisovan or denisova so you have you have Denisova and EH1 and half of the genome near Kalau Cave anyway is modern humans and it's like that all over the Philippines they have that those two mix okay and then when you when we go back down to that route further east near Flores they have this e Flores is the only uh, group of people that we know of right now that have the EH2 the extinct hominin 2 genetics here and that must be the the hobbit or the dwarf uh, or yeah let's go with the hobbit people um uh, genetics and so that's very interesting plus they have eh1 and a little bit of denisova so that's pretty diverse here and as you go further along into sahul or new guinea um we have a group of people who only have denisova and eh1 there's no anatomically modern humans uh, genetics here once you get into Sahul. So all these people, um, they're they're pretty much extinct now. Um, so it's very interesting that 
the Denisova got here way before anatomically modern humans and already left their mark. The red, anyway. Anything with a trace of red means Denisova came in at some point in remote in the remote past before anatomically modern humans came here. So again, this is really really interesting stuff, guys. This this whole um, uh, genetic map that we have, and as you can see, uh, th this place must have been teeming with diversity. And who knows what it would have looked like if you listen to my Grimerica episode. It, 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 we were talking about Dungeons and Dragons and all these different races. It really must have, or it might have looked like something like that. Um, and then you mix that with legends and and stories, and even within scripture, there are stories of giants or like these higher race of beings or these um, ascended masters. All of these things that could be construed as some sort of uh, separate species from us, and it just makes a lot more sense now now that this has come to light um very interesting stuff i'll have a link to this in the description as well um D dr tachera says we knew the story out of africa wasn't a simple one but it seems to be far more complex than we have contemplated and again this has been long speculated and there was a time even a little bit today um this opinion would have cost you your job or you would have become a laughing stock or something and again this just seems well within reason now with all this new evidence coming to light uh, the island southeast asia region was clearly occupied by several archaic human groups probably living in relative isolation from each other for hundreds of thousands of years so again these uh the eh1 the eh2 they were probably again for a while they established their genetics until some group came in and it appears that the Denisovans came in, and then we came in. Very interesting stuff. Um, the timing also makes it look like the arrival of modern humans was followed quickly by the demise of the archaic human groups in each area. That's really interesting. So, th again, did they bring war? Did we bring uh, all the vices unique to Homo sapiens? Are, are, we cap do, are we capable of evil? Or was it more like what happened with when we discovered the new world to just we brought with us all these diseases that they didn't have immunities for um that which just quickly killed everybody like smallpox was it something like that we don't really know i would guess that it would be something like that just because there's no trace of of any violence that they found but then again if there were how long would that be there how long before it decomposed or you know what i mean so it just seems like Every, everything's up in the air and um, hopefully that's the next step or the next couple of steps is to really pinpoint what happened um, because wherever humans go at this time um, homo sapiens rather it seems like the, it, they leave a wake of destruction as they keep going because again you see it in the genetics and w was it a war thing was it did they have some sort of technology it, it's just again we don't know so let me know what you guys think in the comments. Uh, what do you think is going to happen in the future? What what doors does this open? Um, what do you think happened in the past? Is all this bunk? Is this all all this un un uh, pr unprovable? Is are we just chasing our tail here? I don't think so. I think that this is a stepping stone towards something greater and something more exciting. And I said that last time with with. Uh, videos along these lines and every single time something new comes out and they were probably sitting on even more stuff that they haven't even released yet because they either want to do further studies they want to they they want to test it through uh, the fires of criticism first there, there there might be a bunch of stuff that we don't even know about yet that is yet to um, come out so let me know what you guys think and i'll talk to you guys later